What's up guys, John from Linkswell here with another tutorial video. And in this tutorial video, we are talking about boot logo and boot animation. Uh, boot logo being that first image that pops up when you start your vehicle. And then the animation would be the animation that happens after that. That's what we're gonna talk about in this tutorial. I will say this, the boot uh, logo will be much easier to do than the boot animation. Uh, so I will talk boot logo first so you don't have to watch the entire explanation of the animation. Um, but things to know before we get going, first and foremost is that your image needs to be sized at 768 by 1024. Uh, if you have an image that is not that, it either will not upload or it's going to stretch out and not look the right size and look all ballooned out or something like that. So chances are you're gonna need to put whatever image you have into some sort of photography or photo editing program. If you don't have Photoshop or you don't wanna purchase a program, I'll give you guys an insider secret. There's a program called GIMP, G-I-M-P. It's a pretty powerful uh, photo editing program as well as like a graphic design program. Uh, that you can download for free from the internet and then youtube has so many tutorials on how to do different things inside of gimp so if you have an image and you're like i don't know what i'm doing just go download gimp and then check out youtube search in there how to resize an image in gimp watch one of those videos and then you'll be able to import whatever image you have and then you'll know for sure that when you export it that it's set to 768 224 so one more time 768 by 1024 that is the size you need your image and then once you've created that image uh, export it as a png or a jpeg and get that onto a usb and then you're going to take that usb out you're going to get that usb plugged into your radio and it's a really easy process guys the hardest thing really is going to be getting that image resized uh, but once you've got that image resized, you're gonna go into settings and then inside settings, you're gonna select user and you'll see uh, inside user, there's a ton of options uh, that you can change. I've got other videos talking about background, talking about uh, hiding the source bars and how to change default apps. Uh, you can check those videos out on our channel, uh, but we're looking for where it says boot logo. And so long as that image is on your USB, if you select boot logo, you'll see it's gonna pull up and, and access kind of like a file manager. Uh, if you hit that top left uh, little uh, icon with three dots, it's gonna open up where you can say, I wanna look at the hard drive or I wanna look at the USB. And so I'm gonna select my, uh, my USB drive and you can see my image right there of our Jeep. I'm gonna tap that and then that's it guys. That's all you gotta do. You'll tap your image. It's gonna say boot logo uploaded. And then the next time you start your vehicle, your image should be what pops up. So. That's all there is really to changing the boot logo on a generation four, four plus and five. Uh, now we're gonna talk animation. Animation is much more work. Um, it's gonna require a lot of work on your part and uh, probably having to edit in and out of it a few times until you get the timing right. Uh, so let me just kind of explain to you quickly what you're doing. I don't know if you guys maybe remember in grade school when somebody taught you that you could draw stick figures slowly moving and if you made a flip book, it looked like the character was actually walking. That's exactly what you're doing in a boot animation is you're creating a digital flip book. So you need to create each individual image and then you're going to compress this and put it into folders and give it a command file. Um, but some things to know. First, size is the same. 768 by 1024. You need to make sure you make a, all of your images 768 by 1024. Other thing with the images is you wanna make sure that there's no transparency in the images. So, because what is happening is the program is literally gonna put picture one and then it's gonna put picture two right on top of one and then three on top of two. And so if you have areas in your image that is set to transparent, it's gonna show through what's behind it. And so it's gonna make your animation uh, not look as fluid as you want. So 768 by 1024 and make sure that there's nothing transparent, that every image is a solid background. And then we will build this file out um, each image uh, needs to be named by numerical succession and I'll show you that in just a minute. So if you think you can do this, if you're ready to do this, then let me show you how you do it. Ready? Cool. Let's get to my computer. So I've got my computer open here and I'm going to show you, I've created a boot animation .zip, which is essentially the finale. This is what you want the file to look like when it's all said and done. It needs to be named boot animation .zip. Uh, but we're going to look at what is inside that by just opening this folder because it's easier and faster for me. So you can see I have three uh, different 
files inside of my boot animation uh, zip folder. Uh, a .txt, which is a file that's going to tell the program what to do with the images that are with it. Uh, and then I have a folder of part zero and a folder with part one, all full of images. So I really don't know what the best way for me to explain this is. So maybe I will show you my folders and then I will talk about the command file. So my folder part zero has my entire animation in it. Um, and just to give you guys an understanding of what my animation is, let me real quick, I'll open up image one for you so you can see it. So all I did for my animation is I created a background image, which was our Jeep. And then you can see the little mountain range down along the bottom of the Jeep there. What I've done is I took a, and created a small Jeep and my small Jeep is gonna drive over the mountain range, uh, almost going across like a status bar. So for me, the way I got this all set up is, my image one in my boot animation is actually the same image I used as my boot logo. So what that does is it doesn't make a shift. So like right now you'll notice when you start up your thing, you probably have a picture of whatever vehicle you have, like a Ram or an F-150 or a Mustang. So you have an image of a vehicle and then it flips to an animation. So I wanted to make it a little bit more fluid. So I made my splash screen image one in my animation. So what happens is when it goes from um, splash screen or the boot logo to animation uh, step one, there's no change in the image. And so it just looks like it's fluid. So when you start up our Jeep, we have this image. And then as soon as the animation starts, you just start to see the Jeep run across. So that's how I set up my image. You guys could totally do it however you want. If you want your boot uh, logo to look different than your image, then 100% set it that way. That's all on you guys. Uh, but you can see in the folder here, let me move this out of the way. Uh, all of the images are named the same by numerical order. So I named them frame underscore one zero 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 one is my first one. And then you can see if I uh, was to tap through my image, uh, you can see as the Jeep drives across the bottom, the number of the images uh, on top is just going up in succession. You have to make sure you name your files like this because that's what's telling the, when the program wants to run it, it needs to see it in order. If you have number, or if you have your images numbered incorrectly, it's gonna get your animation all uh, wonky. So you can see how it kind of got my Jeep driving across. And so I have it set so that frame one, there's no Jeep, and my frame 44, which is my last frame, it well as well has no Jeep. So my animation starts with no Jeep and ends with no Jeep. And let me tell you kind of why I did that, is I wanted our animation to not look like a cycle that keeps happening and then gets interrupted in the middle of it. I wanted ours to look like a one motion and then it boots up. So. Um, that's why I've got mine built the way I do. One simple animation and it rolls through. So my part zero folder is the entire animation. And then let me show you my part one folder. My part one folder is back to uh, frame one, which is essentially no Jeep on there. So here's where it gets a little bit more uh, confusing, but hopefully we'll bring it all together, guys. Okay, so those are my two folders. Part one, or part zero has all of my animation, and part one has a single image. And let me show you kind of the way this works. So your .txt fi um, file here is gonna be really important because if anything is not correct in here, then nothing's gonna work or it's gonna work wrong. Uh, so let me walk you through what each line means. Um, because you're gonna be able to adjust and change these depending on your own animation. Like you don't have to keep them exactly like this. There are certain things that need to stay the same, so we'll talk about that. And then there are things that you can change. So first line says seven, six, eight, 10, 24, five. So you can see there's seven, six, eight, space, 10, 24, space, five. What this is doing is this is telling the program inside the radio, hey, all of our images are 768 by 1024, like they're supposed to be and we want it to go five frames per second. So the first two numbers are telling you the size of the image. The second one is the frames per second. So that means how many images you want the program to show within a second. What that means is a small number means a slow animation. A higher number means the animation is gonna roll through faster because it's showing more frames per second. So that number you can change. 768 by 1024, that has to stay the same. The frame rate, that's where 
I told you you're probably going to get in and out of your animation a few times because you're going to upload your animation and you're going to recognize, oh man, it was too slow or it was too fast or I wanted to do this, it's too jumpy. You may need to go in and out and change that text file and resave it as a different number. So for our animation, five frames per second means that pretty much every time we boot up our Jeep, the Jeep starts and gets to the end and then the radio boots up. So here's... Uh, just an understanding of the boot up. Your radio does not boot up at the same speed every time. It's, it could be a variance between uh, one and five seconds, uh, depending on how many apps you left open. It could be how many or uh, how much memory you've got used when it comes to movies or music or something downloaded. So like a computer, the more memory you're using, the slower things process like that. So the reason I did our animation the way I did is because like I said before, I wanted our Jeep to drive across and then be done. I didn't want our animation to cycle and have like the Jeep be halfway across the mountains and then it boots up. You can change that however you want it to, uh, but that's how I have ours built. So just know that as we progress through this command file, that's how I have ours set. So five frames per second means that my Jeep gets to the end about perfect timing for the radio to boot up on average. So first line is the size of the image, last number, frame rate. You can change that. Again, higher number means faster animation, lower number means a slower animation. Now the next lines are very important as well. Uh, we can see it's written as P space one, space zero, space part zero. And so let me give you an understanding of uh, what that means. P meaning play, and then the next number is the amount of times you want the program to run through the images in your folder. So I want it to run through one. Like I mentioned before, I only want the Jeep to go across one time. Whether it takes two seconds, four seconds, or no seconds, when the Jeep gets to the end for the radio to boot up, I don't want my Jeep to start again. So for me, I want it to play the animation one time. And then the next number zero is how many seconds in between starting uh, the, the animation and getting to that folder. So that number, that, that second number will be how long it waits before it runs the next part. For me, I didn't want it to wait at all. I wanted it to start right away. So that next, that second line means play one time with no time delay all of what's in part zero. And then it'll play that and then it's gonna jump down to the next line. And we can see the next line is P space zero space zero space part one. And what this is telling the, the program to do is play, and when it's zero, it means infinite, it means it never stops. It boots until, anim, until the Android is completely booted up. So if you were to change on my front line, right? If I was to say, hey, you know what? I want it to do it twice. So I'm gonna change my frame rate from five to 10, which means it's gonna go twice as fast. And then instead of P space one, I would do P space two. That would mean my Jeep would drive across the screen two times, and then it would go to the next set. So again, your animation is gonna be built how you want it, so however many times you want it to go through that folder is what that first number is. If you set it to zero, it means it's gonna go infinite. It's never gonna stop until you uh, the Android is completely booted up. So I could have set just one line, P00, zero, zero, part zero, and it would just drive my Jeep until the an uh, Android booted up. But again, like I said, I wanted it to end at the end that's 100% on you. So you can have multiple steps depending on how many folders you have, but this is gonna be the coding. The coding is P meaning play space and then a number, that's how many times you want it to play through. I believe the highest number you can set is 10. Uh, if you set it to zero, that means it's infinite and it's never gonna kick down to a next level. Uh, so if you have multiple um, levels like we have, or you only have one, make sure that is a set to a zero so that it just continues to play. And then the next one is the gaps in between. So if you happen to have an image that has like two, two things and you want a, a space in between the first thing happening and then the second thing happening, you would just up that second number to one second, two second, three second, four second, five second, whatever you want it to be. And then again, the last one is part one or part zero or part three or part four, whatever folder you want it to go through. So one last time, guys, here's the coding. 768, 1024, size of the image. Last number, frame rate. How many um, images you want to happen in a second. And then everything underneath that, P space, 
the number of times you want it to run through your folder, space the number of seconds you want between uh, the different uh, steps of the animation, and then part zero or one or two, whatever the name of your folder happens to be. So that's how you create that text file. Um, I did forget to mention, when you make your images, you're going to want to export them as a JPEG or PNG. Um, I might have mentioned this, but if you do do PNG, make sure that interlacing is turned off. Uh, interlacing on a PNG actually saves a file with multiple sets of resolutions depending on like when it's opening. Um, and when you have a PNG set to interlace, the program doesn't know how to open it up and so it actually won't work. So if you're gonna do a PNG, make sure that's turned off or uh, JPEG. Uh, once again, uh, uh, export them in numerical order of what you want to play first down to last. Put those in the folders just like you see here. Uh, part and then a number, no space, all lowercase. And then once you've created your text file, and you've got all of your images inside your folders the way you want them, and all of that is set up, you simply grab everything, zip it, zip it as a bootanimation.zip. That's what it has to be, bootanimation.zip. And then once you have uh, gone and uh, zipped it all, and you have it on your uh, computer, copy that zip file to a USB, and then we're gonna take that USB out to the radio, just like we did with boot logo. And let me show you real fast how you set up a boot animation. Same process, radio's on, gets it all booted. You go into settings, you can go back into user settings, and then inside user settings, you scroll, and instead of boot logo, you select boot animation, and boot animation is gonna pop up. It's gonna say, make sure you have the boot animation.zip on the USB or on the radio, and you're gonna say, okay. Now I will say, you can save it to the hard drive of the radio. Um, I'm hit and miss for me when it's on the hard drive. It just works better if I just keep it on the USB. You don't have to keep the USB plugged in, so hear me say that. Um, once it's uploaded, you can unplug the USB and it will stay there. It doesn't have to stay plugged in. Uh, so there's really no need to save it to the hard drive because you just put it on the USB. If you ever need to change it again, you just put it on the USB. Uh, but you'll go ahead and hit load. It's gonna start loading and then it should give you a confirmation to say that the animation file has been uh, uploaded and you are good to go. So there you go, setting boot animation success. And now the next time I start up our radio, it will be my new uh, boot image and then my new uh, boot animation. Uh, so that's the process, guys, on how to change the boot logo and boot animation. I mentioned if you made it to this end, uh, here's what I'm asking. I would love to see what you create. Uh, so if you've created an animation, um, tag us, put it on Instagram, uh, put it into our Facebook groups. Uh, I'll put some links in the video description as well uh, to those pages if you're watching this on YouTube because uh, I'd love to see what you have going on. Like I mentioned before, a boot animation is 100% a labor of love and it will be a labor and it will take you some time. Uh, but ultimately, uh, when it's all said and done, there's just something cool about knowing that you created that. Uh, so that's what you gotta do. Things to note one last time, images all 768 by 1024. If it's a boot logo, super easy to put in. If it's a boot animation, uh, follow along, make sure that text file is good, make sure those folders are good. Um, and again, that frame rate, if you find that your image or your, your animation never finishes, maybe speak, put a higher number on frame rate. If you notice that your animation's too jumpy or it's too fast or it's not working smooth, change that a little bit, tweak it out a little bit, make it exactly how you want it. And then man, post a video, let us see uh, what you got made, uh, what you got going on. Uh, we'd love to see uh, what you guys got created. So that is how you do boot logo. That is how you do boot animation. Hoping to see some cool things. And until next time, guys, we will see you around.